Brewing Strong is brought to you by Blickman Engineering, home of the top-tier brewing stand. Visit them online at BlickmanEngineering.com. Time for the beer radio you've been looking for. This is the show that dispels myths, tackles the toughest topics, and makes no apologies for geeking out on beer. Hosted by two guys that drink before they think, Jamil Zainashev and John Palmer. This is Brew Strong. Hey, howdy, hey, my Bruin brothers and sisters. Greetings, cretins. <laughs> How y'all doing? It's like magic, this That's show. What are. Yes. Magic. And I tell you, the more we drink, the, the better more we, it sounds. The more we think, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of thinking, how's that water book coming? Um, it's getting there. It's uh, we're about halfway, I think, right now. Just yeah. wait for the pages to dry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Do they get wet? Yeah, Is that what uh, I've never felt so underwater as as I'm <laughs> trying to write about water. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. It's a it's a deep subject. Brewing water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get loads of them. You eat too but. much Laffy Taffy, don't you? You get the little jokes in the back. <laughs> Laffy Taffy. Speaking of Laffy Taffy. Our fine brewer sponsor, Blickman Engineering. <laughs> you know, our, our fine sponsor, Blickman Engineering, uh, especially John Blickman. Uh, you know the original a, he's a, he's Laffy a, Taffy. He's a sweetheart of a guy, and he's just he's funny. He's he is. funny as all get out, um, uh, and innovative as all get out. Yes. You know, check out uh, you know those new products that they are they're coming out with the uh, you know the Tower of Power the uh, you know the, uh, the hop um, blocker the hop hop uh, rock hop rocket yeah um, he's always got he's always got a new idea I'm always, it's always cool talking with him to find right. out what he's what he's planning and planning on bringing to market and yeah, see, I'm thinking we're, we're advantaged here in that he yeah. will share these uh, secret advances with us. Mm-hmm. And more with you than he does me. I think uh, I don't think he trusts me 100. percent But you know. <laughs> well, you have too many friends. I don't. I don't. So right. I mean. You have no friends. <laughs> so he knows so, his, his secrets are his safe secrets with me. Secrets are safe. Palmer never talks to anybody. Uh, no, um, he's always coming up with something new and something interesting. And I think that uh, you know it's it's a great time to be a, a home brewer. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, and he's working. He's working hard to you know come up with useful products for the professional brewer too. Right. Well, and he's he's done a, a series of uh, nano scale stuff. It's like one barrel brewery. Mm-hmm. He he's got yeah now. So uh, you know, if you're if you're interested in starting, you know, you listen to the there's going to be another pro episode. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, Blickman Engineering. They've got some uh, cool gear that uh, you might might give a give a glance at. And How much see for a one uh, barrel brewery? brewery? I, you know, I don't know the cost, but um, yeah, we don't deal in pricing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we expect to get everything for free. Yeah. I mean, we are something of a big deal here. So <laughs> yeah. uh, in this you know, room at this yeah, time, if you, uh, <laughs> yeah, if you want to send us something for free, we're glad money, to. Money, uh, money. What's, yeah, that? Right. what's that? What's, what's, what's that? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm sure. You know, I'm sure it's not cheap because uh, quality is never cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, but I bet you it is cost effective. If uh, if you're looking at opening up a nano brewery, I bet you. Uh, yeah. You know, he's held the price down to to a point where you know th- that's the other th- cool thing about him. The, the guy knows uh, engineering and designing things. Right, and he looks at the cost of adding, you know, some other bell or whistle or something, and he's like, he he weighs whether something should be added and you know drive the price up or whether you know and how mm-hmm. effective that thing is. Yeah, and you cost know maybe cuts back. Analysis. So all we 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 thought about doing that, but you know your price is going to double, and then all of a sudden you know what what value are you getting for your money? So I think that I think it's high value products personally. Mm-hmm. If quality is never cheap, why is this show free? <laughs> well, then it's being priced appropriately. Then right. there you go. 
No, so uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, you know, check check Blickman Engineering. Uh, you know, they sell their their products through uh, all your great homebrew stores, and uh, uh, you can also check it on on their website there. But uh, I would be surprised if it was if it was priced unreasonably because right. uh, they they actually have uh, several uh, nano breweries already started up with their gear. That's right. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, check it out. It might be might be something to to get into. And as a matter of fact, that's what we're talking about today. Is uh, again, uh, you know, getting started with a brewery. Now you guys have kind of jumped past the nano phase. You were ten gallons, and you kind of went to a twenty barrel uh, kind of uh, situation. This being there. Patrick and Brian of Pacific, uh, Brewing. Pacific Brewing Lab. And right. and you know, to speak of uh, you know, where's where's uh, Sven? Where's uh, Steve Kinsey? He is deep brewing inside today. the mash tun or the yeah. brew kettle or his fermenter today. So, yeah, he's actually brewing. So he's got his... His first beer is a barley wine. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. I just, I mean, that just blows wow. me away, man. I don't know. Yeah, you want to start with the one that uh, needs the longest aging. Yeah, I know. I, I just, go. I don't know. It's Wise like, move. You think it's always, you know, pale ale or, you know, whatever everybody brews. But yeah. I don't know. I think a barley wine's kind of kick ass. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he's going to do a great job. So. What's his brewery name? Uh, Kinetic, Ooh, in Lancaster, California. Yeah, it's a great name. It's a great name. Yeah. He's uh, done it right. Well, that's one of the things we want to talk about uh, today is kind of marketing. How do you, uh, you know, from our last show, people were asking, you know, how do you determine, like, your beer lineup? And uh, how do you, you know, kind of market that? How, and I think it's part of marketing. You know, your beer lineup is part of marketing, your beer names, all that stuff. <laughs> a critical part of it you know you can make a great beer but unless you have some sort of marketing to get people interested enough to give it a try then you're screwed <laughs> yeah i think i think your name on your first beer here your squid ink i think that's that's a great uh great name I think it's that was a, patrick right good, there good choice right there <laughs> it's funny yeah. nice chocolatey oh please go ahead yeah it's it's real nice chocolatey hoppy um, Cascadia Ale. He's a I, <laughs> black IPA for me. But um, <laughs> please use whatever terms. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, very nice, very nice chocolate notes in it. And uh, you know, the, uh, I'm told Squid Ink doesn't taste like this. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, this is a very nice beer. Thank you. There may or may not be any Squid Ink in this beer. <laughs> uh oh, Squid Ejaculate. <laughs> what we're talking about. <laughs> Speaking of ejaculate, perfect segue. Adam and Eve, perfect segue right there. Jamil is the segue king. He just is. He carries a crowbar and whatever. I don't even care. It doesn't matter what you've said. I'll convert that into an Adam and Eve transition. You just talk about the space program. Well, let me tell you about space. Oh man. So, getting back to the portfolio. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. And it's you know we found it's really you know it's it's either a no brainer to to name something or it's exceptionally difficult. <laughs> it, I mean, really, is uh, for me at least for us, it's, it's one or the other. Like it comes like it's within minutes we can we can name it. And it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes or or it takes it takes now. I'm, I'm there's one beer that we're going to go to market with next, and um, we're still trying to. Yeah. It's been about twelve months. Well, you said on the last that show that that uh, you were intended to brew. Uh, non-traditional beers. Yeah. So, uh, what, what, what? How would you describe that your portfolio? Uh, so, Brian and I, uh, we tend to find a lot of inspiration not just in the like on the beer shelf, uh, but we find it in you know uh, in shops, you know, like uh, herb shops, you know, where they sell like all different kinds of spices. Oh, and herb herbs. shop. Right. Mm. We are based in San Francisco. You um, visit some herb shops, and all of a sudden you, <laughs> some, you get hungry, <laughs> then you have some inspiration. <laughs> right. I know. Where's that. the tamale, lady, that, bro? That didn't, that didn't that didn't that didn't come out as, as, as expected. Um, but what no, I mean we in? we find you know like uh you know we find inspiration in a lot of different places for for the beers that that uh you know that we want to make, and so you know we'll use anything from. Hibiscus flowers to uh, Szechuan peppercorns mm-hmm. to goji berries to different types of fruit to you know different kinds of gourds or you know whatever. You now, know, have you been filing ginger. your TTP formulas? Uh, w- when we when we go to make these beers uh, on our larger system, we will be we'll be filing those forms. Yeah, you got to f- f- file those formulas early if you want <laughs> the beer. We uh, we we uh, we've. Uh, 
we've been working with them a little bit and, and they've been pretty good about you know i've talked with with uh, a couple of our contacts there and they've, they've been really good about like understanding what we're doing and mm-hmm. and and what we want to do as long as we're being as transparent as we can be and, yeah they're great they folks are. i they think are. at the ttb and in california abc they I, are. i've only run across people that want to help you get it right yeah. as quickly as possible they've so. been exceedingly patient with yeah. with me <laughs> right you think, oh, I'm, I'm a freaking idiot yeah and exactly just like, no that's okay yeah you know people make these mistakes that's all right so no they've been great and and we just we never wanted to make a traditional beer and and we're going to continue on that path mm-hmm. um you know for better or for worse that's that's the direction that we're <laughs> that we're going to go um so and i think marketing I, and that helps us market too is mm-hmm. when we sit there and say no, we're not going to make a traditional beer we're going right. to i think we appeal to a burgeoning market that's you know i think a lot of people over the last 10 years have really uh, discovered craft beer, and now I think they're starting to look for something mm-hmm. a little bit more unique and a little bit more uh, adventurous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <sighs> right. And I'm hoping. I mean, you I'm, know, I'm, I'm uh, you know. getting getting back to our previous show. You know, you're gonna you're gonna come out and go. You know, we got the goji berry. We got the we got the herb special. We got you know all, the, all these things, right. and uh, you know you're gonna go to these accounts, and they're gonna say, "Well, do you have an IPA? <laughs> you know, I can sell an IPA." So if you do these other beers, um, I think that's great, and I think you know you should follow your passion, but be prepared for people to not understand what you're doing. Right. So you want to kind of distill it down to again a short phrase that helps Christmas spice beer explain what the beer is. Right. You know, it's like oh, it's a you know Belgian blonde with you know spices. Right. And those spices add all this great fruity character. You know. It's like a, it's like a red ale with like Asian right. spices in it. Right, it's so a red ale right. with you know these great Asian spices right. that that you know have all these you know the, right. the greatest characteristics of Thai food or whatever it might be. Right. You know, you can tell it's like Kung Pao that, chicken, right, right, but in beer form. Right, yeah, something where <laughs> right. they can quickly understand it and they're going like, oh, that sounds cool. Right, and even if you're kind of like dumbing down what you're, and it's not dumbing it down, it's just distilling, distilling it yeah. to the basic form where you can quickly communicate it to them. Because they're thinking, and they're they're like, "How am I going to communicate this to my customer? How yeah. am I going to sell this beer? If I need to spend five minutes explaining what it is, nobody's going to drink it. Everybody needs a soundbite. If I can, yeah, if I can tell it to them quickly and they understand it and the, they order it and they're interested, then I can go in and kind of go into the ingredients and the you know, how special it is after they've you know yeah. kind of settled on it. Well, I think it's like teaching someone how to homebrew. You you know if they go oh hey, right you how start do, off you with the extra yeah right. how do you do that oh well you just take grains and you soak them in water and then you right. boil you it mix and you malt put hops and in, yeast and, and you ferment yeah, it and, and they go oh and then if yeah. they want to ask the questions to to right, really right. find out then then it's up to them but uh, yeah I mean yeah, and I point. wonder you know if there's people that you know that you don't know it because you're so mm-hmm. in your own world. Well, and you know, it's, everyone it's like your when circle. people start off explaining homebrewing with this long, drawn-out process yeah. where the explanation takes as well, long as brewing, take, people lose – they have no interest in homebrewing at all. You harvest some of the grain. And the right. Grain. If you well, I think, just you know, I go think, basics, it's faster. Like Papazian did a really great job, you know, mm-hmm. in his original book and saying, you know, just, like, relax. Just mm-hmm. have a homebrew. Like, I mean, he kept saying that over and over again. I think mm-hmm. that really, like, it distilled it down a little bit. Just like, it's not rocket science. It's easy. It's, you know, right, it's great. Right. Well, and you know, I think that's how the you know the the beer descriptions <coughs> need to go, and you know, beer naming I think you know is a big thing. You know, a fun, interesting name, creative names, names that you know evoke different things. I think help a lot. Um, you know, the evil evil twin beer that we do didn't even we weren't going to brew something <laughs> like that we weren't going to use the name evil twin but you know people were like can you have something more mainstream you know we we're going to do all these unusual beers and people were like you have anything more mainstream and you know they wanted an ipa and i'm like well you know how about like a red ale that's called evil twin and they're like evil twin oh yeah you know and pretty soon i, I skipped the whole red ale thing i just said how will we get this beer called evil twin this is before we even brewed it and I said Evil Twin, people go, oh, I could sell that. That sounds really good. I haven't told you anything about the beer. It sounds good. It's all in the name. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, well, they like the name. They go, yeah, it, it sounds like a good name. I'm like, okay. And they're like, well, what, what, what is the beer? Would be their next question. And it's like, 
like a West Coast red. I, I would try and explain the whole thing, and then they glaze over, and I'm mm. like, it's a West Coast red. And they go, oh, yeah, oh, I can sell the, the daylights out of that. I'm like, all right, whatever. And, you know, the, the consumers aren't complaining either. They're like, okay, maybe it's, you know, on one end of a West Coast Red. It's, you know, it's West Coast Red. Um, but they're enjoying it. It's like, yeah, it's West Coast Red, but it's, you know, just a little bit different. You know, it's got a little bit of extra roast in there. Okay. You know, so people are enjoying it. But if you don't make that kind of, uh, you know, bridge between, you know, the quick – explanation to get them to try it you know and if it's bad then they don't have to drink it anymore but you know if you can't get that quick snap of interest then they're never going to try it in the first place i think there's a lot of great beers that you know languish on the shelves because of poor marketing we've you know we've done pouring events where we um halfway through we we weren't moving a beer and mm-hmm. it was, we had a, a name. It, it just it was not working. And literally, we erased it off the board and wrote a new name on it. And it, right. it, 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 I mean, halfway right. through an event, and yeah. it changed. And like all of a sudden, it started moving. And we're like, you know. So I mean, it, it, it was, was a brown ale. We called it a brown ale, and then we changed it. What did we change it to? Uh, so I can't remember exactly what we changed. But we changed it to something much more appealing to people. And they were like, Oh yeah, let's do that. It's great. You it was know? like amber or something. Yeah, anything. <laughs> but like it was just it, it literally. Like, I don't like dark beers, so we like. Little, I think we changed the color, like right. the color slightly in the name. That's like, what oh, I'm yeah, saying. A brown does not sell as well as a red. <laughs> yeah. It can be the same beer, but <laughs> exactly. You know, we were at the uh, and the thing that really dr- drove this home to me was a few years ago at one of the Brewing Network parties. They wanted to bring home brew, and I'm like, oh, I got a couple of leftover kegs of crap that I was going to throw away, <laughs> but all right, you know, we'll go ahead and serve those. And uh, one was kind of this weird amber beer that wasn't very good, and the other was this overly oaked old ale that was just like like sucking on a piece of wood. <laughs> and so yeah. when people came up, I said, well, it's kind of like an amber, and it's like an overly oaked old ale, and people are like, you know... Hardly any drinkers. I mean, people would come up and they're like, "Yeah, it's all right," you know. And some guy, uh, the guy from uh, Arizona, or wherever, uh, he came up and he said, uh, or "The Nutter Boys." They came up and said, uh, "Yeah, you really ought to rename these beers. And you'll do better with them." I'm like, uh, "Yeah." Dougie. I'm like, "What?" And he's like, uh, "Name this one uh, Rusty Trombone." <laughs> oh no! Yes. And the other one, you yes. can call, you can call Geppetto's crotch. Oh, and so geez. I, I started telling. I didn't even have it written down anywhere. But when people would come up, and and this is the power of it, when people would come up, they go, "What are you serving?" I said, "Rusty Trombone and Geppetto's crotch." <laughs> and all of a sudden, I had a huge line because those people would go and they would talk to somebody else and say, and they go, "What are you trying?" Oh, Rusty Trombone and Geppetto's crotch. <laughs> I thought, "Well, I gotta try that, right?" <laughs> And the line all of a sudden grew, and it blew the kegs, you know, really quick. Got a huge line, and um, and and we did a blend too of uh, it was either rusty crotch or Geppetto's trombone. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Geppetto's trombone. Yeah, yeah, that's like great. That. And I'll tell you, you know, just changing the names. We didn't change the beer. We changed the yeah. names. And you know, I don't think you get away with those names federally, but I think in homebrew it, it worked. It's true. And it just made a world of difference and a big impression on me. The beers didn't change. The names changed. And people tried them. They weren't bad beers. Yeah. I didn't think they were great beers, but they weren't bad. And, you know, people enjoyed them so much more once the names changed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think marketing plays a lot a lot in people's psyche, mm-hmm. even before they even smell it or try it. Mm-hmm. I think they, mm-hmm. you know, if, if, it's, if it's something they've already bought into in their, own, in their head before they've even tried it, they're going to enjoy it. Right. Unless it's, I mean, unless it's god awful. Right, right. You know. Yeah, it's not going to fix a horrible beer. It's not, but it's gonna it's gonna make a mediocre beer or you know an okay beer you know mm-hmm. sell well. Yeah. Right, right. But so. it is hard, you know, finding a, a unique name, you know, yeah. when you're trying to apply for a license. Uh, yeah. Well, and, and license wise, it doesn't need to be a unique name. But you know, there, if there's other breweries already using a name, then don't, let let the other breweries have. Don't that. do. Yeah, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. uh-huh. there's been a couple good you know a couple good stories in the. You know, in the industry about that kind of thing, right? I mean, you can always be a more good creative. Google search. Will yeah, exactly. Show you. Like we had a, we had an issue with that earlier, uh, early on after we had applied for a business license. Somebody kind of come along and and was kind of doing an, another kind of beer thing, beer centric mm-hmm. thing that was a very similar name to ours, and it was kind of like 
guys, uh, like a quick Google search, and you would have like easily seen. Right. You're like, oh, right. I've, I've never, you know, I've, I've never even heard right. of you guys. Or before we even, you know, kind of went to market with our name, we were like, we extensively searched everything. It's just, well, yeah, so mm-hmm. in California. Come on, guys. The Heretic IPA. It's like, well, dude, we're selling beer all over where you live. <laughs> you tell me you never heard of it. <laughs> never heard of you. Well, it's like, okay. Been a home brewer for 20 years. Never heard of you. All right. Well, all right. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> Great job. Uh, you know. <laughs> if you could use a different name. It's like, yeah, no problem. All right. Let's do this. Let's take a break, and we'll get back to uh, talking about marketing uh, your products. Back after this. When you hear Blickman Engineering, think innovation, passion, quality, and customer service. Blickman Gear is designed by brewers to give you a sense of pride in your equipment. At Blickman, they know what makes brewing a pain and build gear that makes it fun. Like the Intuitive Beer Gun, a completely different approach to filling bottles. The Therminator Wart Chiller, a new take on a plate chiller that's sized for flow, performance, and the high groundwater temps home brewers face every day. The Brewmometer, a brilliant well thermometer design with brewing parameters right on the dial. The auto sparge, ultimate simplicity for preventing an overflow or running your mash tun dry. And much more, like the modular top tier brewing stand, conical fermenters, and their boiler maker brew pots. With more cutting edge equipment coming soon, keep up with the latest from Blickman at BlickmanEngineering.com and stay on the cutting edge. Hi, this is Push from the Brewing Network, and I want to tell you about the Brewmaster's Warehouse and how you can get 10% off your next order. I'm a pretty techie guy, but I've never seen an online store like this. It's awesome. Go to brewmasterswarehouse.com and click on Brew Builder. You can whip up a custom recipe so easily even Sven could do it. Seriously, it's slick. You can share your recipe with your own logo and notes to the Brewmaster's database if you want. And the best part, it keeps a running tally of the beer you're building while you're doing it. Then, bam, click Buy Recipe, and your cart is filled and ready to go with helpful suggestions in case you forgot something. This thing is amazing. Brewmaster's Warehouse is run the way a home brewer would do it, with great service, fast turnaround, and $6.99 flat rate shipping. Brewmasters Warehouse and the Brew Builder blew me away. Check it out today at brewmasterswarehouse.com. I'm serious. And don't forget to put BN Army in the discount code box for 10% off your order. Check out brewmasterswarehouse.com. Cheers. A heretic is anyone who does not conform to an established attitude, doctrine, or principle. If you love craft beer, you're already a heretic. The very first thing we did when we started looking at the beers that we would brew, we got rid of all those recipes. We started from scratch. We've been pilot brewing the most creative things that we think of and the most interesting things. We've completely gone away from style. Heretic Brewing Company is opening this spring in Pittsburgh, California, and you can be a part of it. Visit hereticbrewing.com and facebook.com slash hereticbrew. Get the latest updates on the brewery and upcoming beers. Show everyone how you celebrate great beer as a heretic. It's a fairly powerful word. Being a heretic, that means you're not settling for ordinary beer. You are going with flavorful, creative, bold, interesting beers. A heretic is looking for the best beers out there. Be a heretic. Don't drink ordinary beer. Since the first time the Brewing Network microphones turned on, more beer was behind it. More Beer sponsors the programming on the BN because, like you, they love brewing. And like the Brewing Network, they love sharing their knowledge. MoreBeer.com isn't just a website to place your next equipment or ingredient order. MoreBeer.com also gives you access to free beer information that will make you a better brewer. Go to MoreBeer.com and click into the Learning Center. You'll find podcasts, technical facts, video tutorials, and more, including access to The Buzz, More Beer's social network of more than 5,000 members. And some of them might even be crazier about beer than you are. Get over to morebeer.com today and take advantage of the buzz, the forum, the learning center, and make sure you're signed up to receive the newest More Beer catalog. More Beer, bringing you absolutely everything for beer making. Back to the two guys that know how to turn beer into beer. This is Brew Strong.
All right, we're back. We're enjoying another uh, pro strong episode, as, as Sven uh, coined it the other day. Yes, I thought that, yeah, it's a good pro, pro strong. Yeah, you know, speaking of um, beer and beer judging, um, were we speaking of beer judging? We are. I don't think we did. Well, we're 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 judging beer and marketing. If, so if, you, if you want to segue over to that, yeah, the judging ahead. of beer. Just say it was a nice try. <laughs> nice, nice try. Right there. Thanks. Um, anyway. <laughs> Um, BeerJudgeEducation.com. It's a uh, new website. It's been up for a few months, and uh, it's, it helps you prepare for the BJCP exam. It's an online course, and they uh, have uh, was it one-on-one or group sessions where you're with a instructor. Uh, you can you know take it online at mm-hmm. uh, times and. Uh, yeah, seemed real cool to me. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you checked it out, but mm-hmm. looked uh, into a little bit. Yeah, yeah. They, they, you go online and you've got these uh, instructors. It's live, and they kind of walk you through. Uh, it's like an a, a exam prep course online at your your pace. There, yeah, a lot easier to schedule than you know than a uh, weekend class in many right. cases for us. And uh, if you apply now, the classes are just one hundred and seventy five dollars, and down from two hundred and fifty dollars. Through January 1st of 2012, if you use the coupon code BBS11HOLIDAYS. That's BBS11HOLIDAYS. Um, so, you know, it's a good way to learn about craft yeah. brewing and, and judging. And Well, I think uh, if, you, if you don't pass, they, you know, will let you keep retaking until until you're good. That's right. Um, so they kind of guarantee. you don't get 60% guarant- or better. Guarantee you'll pass that exam. Yeah. We get to retake it for your charge. It's an, it's a really good deal. Yeah. So um, pretty cool stuff. I'd I'd give it a shot because a lot of the uh, local prep exams, I think they're cheaper, mm-hmm. but you don't get recorded uh, exam materials. These are all recorded, and you can play them back later on, and you know review yeah. the material. You know that would be so, useful. Yeah. yeah, I think it's I think it's a that's a great idea, and they're they're all they're all teachers. So uh, you, you come from a teaching background, your family. Yeah, right? a lot of teachers, and um, that's why I went into engineering myself. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no money in teaching. <laughs> well, no, that, and I don't, I don't, I'm not a great, well, I shouldn't say I'm not a great teacher, because I've done pretty well, but, you know, it takes, it takes me time right, to put right. together a presentation, or put together, you know, a chapter in a but book. Good, good, uh, good teachers are, are hard to find, and, you know, yeah. it, it makes a difference. You can get somebody who knows their stuff, but can't. Yeah. Translate that information, or communicate that information to you. Good organization. It's hard hard yeah. to learn from people like that. Yeah, when you get somebody who's good at teaching. Uh, they can take the same material and actually can help you. Mm-hmm. So, if you're somebody that learns all on your own, then I'll oh, screw these people. Go ahead and you know, yeah. get, you buy yourself a pile of books and a bunch of beers and learn all on your own. But if you benefit from somebody explaining things to you and helping you, quizzing you in a way that helps reinforce the material so you remember right. it and all that yeah. like a good teacher does there you go uh you know check these people out what, what's the website again it's beerjudgeeducation.com there you go well also you know more than just teaching it they provide a structure so yeah you could go out and find all that information but it's going to be everywhere you don't mm-hmm. know exactly what's going to be on the test you can dig for it on the internet mm-hmm. and kind of you know do all that but if you really want to be prepared um, you know, nothing can beat at least learning in a group, even yeah. if you are a, a, so, a kind of a solo learner. Yeah. Organization helps a lot. And that's what they offer. Well, and speaking of nothing can beat. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about, uh, marketing and, uh, you know, beer lineups. So I, I guess the, the question from the last hour on, um, uh, you know, your product lineups and beers, yeah. So I think we talked about this uh, sufficiently already. You go in with these interesting beers that you want to do, and a lot of the accounts, they'll be like, well, you know, do you have anything more mainstream? Now, if you're looking at only placing your beers in high-end geeky places that they've already got three or four IPAs and three or four, you know, red ales, three or four stouts and all that, and then... They'll put on a bunch of other different beers. Then I think you can get away with beers that are out on the outer fringe. But I think that limits your market significantly. The bulk of beer, craft beer being consumed is like IPA, pale ale, amber ales, red ales. 
So, um, yeah, I don't know if it's selling out having a beer like that. <laughs> um, I think, you know, you just make a high quality beer of that, uh, in that vein. And, um, you know, I think it's worthwhile. And I think it opens, opens the accounts up to other things. You can, that allows you to get into, you know, more beer bars that are dabbling in craft. And that opens your your potential market significantly, and you'll need to do that if you want to you know grow, if you want to be niche and uh, just stay in a, in a smaller market or do you know limited quantities and you know be known for that. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. If you want to you know be big and you know afford the corporate jet, then you're gonna have to you know go more mainstream and and get into more of the places where you see. You know, Sierra Nevada, or they got Sierra Nevada, Sam Adams, and maybe Firestone. Yeah. It's like if you want to, if you want to be big, you have to be one of those taps. Yeah. But well, Jamil, I think you had a good point um, last hour. I did. Well, with the word bridge, I mean, you've mm. got to build a bridge from you know products that the retailer knows to mm-hmm. your product, mm-hmm. and you know, in the case of, of Pacific Brewing Labs, I mean. You have a hibiscus saison, and you're you know you're you're, you're saying that uh, you're having a hard time coming up with a a good name for it, a name that's short, catchy, you know, describes the product, um, like squid ink. Yeah, or squid ink for your excellent for your, name. Yeah, for your chocolate IPA, um, it's and and that is a that is a real challenge, and uh, they, uh, I mean, hibiscus saison says what it is and you want you sometimes a lot of brewers i think try to overthink their names you know coming up with something uh you know i I mean hibiscus flower uh very clear clean you know fruity um flavors and so on uh, bright colors and you know try to weave all that into a name Mm -hmm. um yeah, I, it, I just just say some maybe a great name for that beer. Yeah, yeah. that's why we're we, having we, trouble. Yeah, right. We've been going with that name for again like twelve months mm-hmm. now, and it, yeah. it seems to be working. But like we're like, oh no, you're right. I think we're overthinking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we want we, something catchy and within our theme and yeah, descriptive at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could go with something like say Sunday Helmica, but uh, oh yeah, you know. no. We, and we thought like, <laughs> I looked at like different no, languages. No. And, yeah, and yeah. I thought Squid Skin was not a good. Name. No, that probably so, wasn't. Well. Yeah. I didn't think that was going to be a good one. I don't well, know. I like it. I, I like it. <laughs> Squidskin Magnum would be. Yeah. Oh, yes. No, yeah, there's, there's definitely been, there's definitely a lot on the cutting floor. Go ahead and uh, slip like the it. hood on. I don't know. Oh. Oh. Squid flower. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it. You're right. It is a. It's a tough call coming it up is. with uh, something, but, and that makes the just that much more important to put out. You know, to come up with um, the sound bite, you know, the the description, the short description of the beer, so that no matter what you do call it, you can quickly uh, build that bridge to the retailer, to the customer on what it is that you know that you're you're offering. Well, and did I even introduce? I'm sorry. You know, once we start one of these shows and I get to drinking, I, I miss a lot of things. <laughs> no, I don't think I introduced uh, Patrick Horn and Brian Hermanson from uh, Pacific Brewing Laboratory. They're with us today. Um, talking about you know marketing, you know when you when yeah. you start up, you know they're, they've started up uh, fairly recently, and and they're looking at uh, you know how they expand their their brewery and how they get things going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, initially you today. were saying that you're going to focus on the San Francisco area, yeah, mm-hmm. um, and then and you do want to grow, yeah, and uh, so we talked about you know strategic cities to protect, perhaps you know market your beers to to build some buzz, but you know you've got social media social media working for you right now um you know building a buzz in the san francisco area where where do you think you'll go next i mean you're gonna just stay in san francisco maybe go up, branch out to san diego or yeah we've got our california license so it'd be easy to go to the next california city um but i i do admire the portland beer scene and i would love to somehow sneak our beer in there and be a part of that excitement up there yeah, um, going to Seattle. different some states, you know, they require a lot of effort, mm-hmm. and pretty much all of them require distributors. So you have to have a distributor for Oregon, really, that'll take your beer in. Like they you have, have to, to pump your gas when you go to gas. Station. Yeah, you have to have a distributor <laughs> for weird? Washington. I kind of don't like it to take right. you. It's creepy. So, That's weird. 
you have to apply for licenses and then you have to get a distributor to handle it so it's much more difficult than self-distributing in california yeah redefine uh, occupy portland yeah no <laughs> nice no i mean i mean we're definitely i mean as soon as we feel like this market is is we're stable uh in this market and, and we, we're you know we're not flailing around mm-hmm. as not to say that we're flailing around now but <laughs> it's, like a squid it, you always it flailing feels around like flailing yeah. uh I, I you know i think i think southern california is, is such a, a huge opportunity yeah um and so, you know, we're definitely going to look at that market and then, you know, uh, and see kind of where we go from there. I mean, it may, you know, I've always thought of this kind of like, you know, m- you know, kind of march across the country kind of like campaign where we, you know, we just continually like constantly moving east mm-hmm. um, or south and east. But, you know, I, again, yeah, I'm going to find yourself s- making a big jump east and yeah, that's what back I'm the other way. I, you know, and I, 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 again, it's it's one of those things where I think we're going to, you know, I'm hoping to get you know as much knowledge from the industry as we can possibly get, but mm-hmm. I think a lot of it just happens like it would make sense for us at that moment. Yep. Uh, and I, and yeah. I'm, you have I'm to hoping. you have to kind of like balance it with <laughs> you know you got to sell beer and you got to you got to make sure that all that you're producing you're selling and that you know as soon as you line up sales for that and you're sure that that's going you increase your capacity and then you know have that ready to go online and then you line up you know more sales and that you keep those two and even check because you don't want to run out of beer and spotty go on and off supply because that messes with the distributors that messes with the retailers they all get pissed off and they're just like why am i dealing with this podunk company that can't supply steady beer um, you know, when somebody asks for beer, you got to have it, you know, especially if you've provided it to them before or you went for the sale. Mm-hmm. When they ask for it, you better have it for them. Now, somebody who you've never sold to before, never marketed to, and they're calling you up and saying, oh, can I get your beer? And it's like, sorry, we don't distribute to that area. That's okay. But once you're, you've kind of made this relationship and promised somebody some beer, you better have it all the time. And so you have to kind of look at your numbers and make sure that those match up with what your market is. And when you go to open a new market, that you have the capacity to serve that market. And you need to build your capacity and serve your markets and get those going and take care of your existing markets. And then, you know, you need to keep planning for additional capacity just off of natural growth in your existing markets. And then before you open another market, you need to make sure you've got the expansion to to handle that as well. How can you gauge how fast your markets are growing? Like, how do you know how much, how many kegs a bar will go through? And different bars and different different. And, right, right. You, know. you don't really know. And some of them, they'll go. You know, we just kind of um, know some people at Stone, and they wanted some beer for an event. We'll talk about events too. You guys had a question on events. Um, they wanted some beer for a, a charity event. I'm like, oh, I know those guys. I know Dr. Bill. He's a great guy. I've known him for years. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I'll send you some beer. And then they try the beer, and they're just like, oh, you know, we want to put it on the bistro. I'm like, great, you know, Stone Bistro. It's sweet. What a great mm-hmm. place. And um, they're blowing through kegs like every week. You know, we're like, having to drive down kegs. It's like I never would have imagined. You know, and then you'll get other places that, you know, they're much slower in turning a, in turning a keg. Just depends on the place. So what's the range? Like one day for a keg, for a five-gallon keg, up to a month? Yeah, you know, there's places that'll that'll blow a half barrel in, in less than a 24 hours. They'll put, it, they'll put it on and it's it's gone. And they're just like, yeah, we ran out. <laughs> and we're like, you ran out. <laughs> Of the beer we just gave you. <laughs> you're like, yeah, you went that night. Yeah, it's wow. like, so we gave you, we do 50 liter and 20 liter. And we're like, yeah, we have 50 liter, 13.2 gallons, and you're gone. In 24 hours. Yeah, they're like, yeah, I went this evening. It's like, well, you just put it on. I'm like, yeah, send us another one. It's like, okay. It's a good sign. Yeah. But what's the uh, longest Other places, um, there was a pizza place that, it took like a 20 and i'm not sure when they put it on but like a month later they like yeah we need another one i'm like okay you know it's hardly worth you know yeah the effort but um 
uh, you know, so it's 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 going to range based on the based on the account. But uh, you know, you have to you have to keep uh, you know just aware of you know that's that supply and demand. When they are asking for that beer, you better have beer. And if you don't, you better have at least some some another beer for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, when we started out, we Backups. kept running out of Evil Twin, but we had Cousin. We ran out of Cousin, we had Evil Twin. Evil it was hard cousin. to keep both of them at the same same time. So um, people were okay with that. They're like, oh, all right, you know, we'll, we'll switch between one and the other. And now some of them, they want both on at the same time because of that. Great. But you got to be careful. <laughs> Landed two handles. Right. And you just got to be careful that uh, you don't um, you know, disappoint somebody when they want beer. Because they want beer to sell. And if they don't have your beer to sell, they'll, sell. they'll get somebody else's beer to fill that handle. Because they need to make sure every handle has a beer on it. Mm-hmm. They don't want, and they're not going to reserve space for you. you can know? you give them extra kegs just in case? Or oh, you, up you, to them? Yeah, really? some, you can sell them more. But again, you have to sell it to them. You can't do consignment or anything like that. That's just against the law. Yeah. So, um, but most of them, they're you know they're okay. What we like to do is we call every week, and I, you know I was wondering, is that annoying or is it helpful or you know what do you want? And um, by and far, everybody says it's helpful. I thought, well, you know, they'll call you if they want more beer. They know how to get a hold of you. They know if they want more beer. But, and they seem really busy when you call. But we call them every week without fail. We're just, hi, how you doing? Want to check? Make sure, you know, do you need anything? Everything going okay? Is there anything we can do for you? You know, we've got, you know, a new batch of this or that. You know, do you need any beer this week? It's a, you know, a two-minute conversation. And if they need beer, they go, yeah, send me, you know, a couple of these, a couple of those, or no, we're good for this week. Okay, great. Talk to you next week. You know, you leave a positive and they're just like, good. I didn't have to look up their phone number and call them. I think that's kind of what's going on. With yeah. Account folks. maintenance. Well, and who who yeah. are you talking to exactly? I mean. Um, the purchaser. Whoever. It's, it's, it tends to be owner or they have a, a beer purchaser. Okay. So yeah, not just somebody the you know. Stuff. No, yeah, yeah. You make contact with whoever purchases their beer, and um, and it, it it's a quick conversation. It takes us you know a couple hours every week, but I think they feel like hey, they're interested in making sure we have you know product, and you know you don't get upset if they say no, or it's like you know <laughs> oh, do you need us to pick up any empty kegs? You know even if they say no, we offer to pick up empty kegs because. They don't have storage space for all these. That's one of the things that people get pissed off about the distributors. A mountain of kegs, empty kegs. And we go and pick up our one or two, and they're going, like, I wish the distributors would come and pick up these kegs. And it's like, it's a pile. They were delivering yesterday, and they didn't pick up any of them. And here's 20 they could have taken. I don't know why those guys aren't taking the kegs with them. I'm like, for us, you know, Cooperage is expensive, so... But like you guys are great, you're always picking up your kegs. I'm like, yeah, well, freaking things cost us, you know, hundred plus a piece. <laughs> we need to fill them. Yeah, yeah I want to, you know, for everyone we don't pick up, we have to buy another to, you know, have to to fill. So, real important. All right. Um, great. Well, and and one thing we want to talk about, I guess you guys had a question on events and mm-hmm. how events play into your whole marketing yeah. strategy. Mm-hmm. All right, let's do this. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we will uh, talk about events. Back after this. What does craft beer mean to you? Is it a delicious way to support your town's local brewer? Or perhaps it's the perfect beverage to pair with those delicious devils on horseback. Regardless of whether you're thinking of pints or pairings, pilsners or porters, craftbeer.com is the site where craft beer lovers come together to learn and share. Craftbeer.com is brought to you by the Brewers Association and celebrates the best of American craft beer and its brewers. Craftbeer.com is the best place to find craft beer events, recipes, great feature stories, Stories, the most up-to-date brewery listings, and resources for your next beer tasting or dinner, like style guidelines, pairing mats, and charts. Get the inside scoop on new beer releases and special events from today's craft beer insiders, and chime in to share your own knowledge, perfect pairings, road trips, recipes, and more. Craftbeer.com, celebrating the best of American beer. 
BN Army, Hop Tech has a great discount waiting for you. Do you often find it difficult to find specific specialty ingredients for your homebrew recipes? Well, listen to this. Hop Tech stocks 59 different grains to choose from, 39 varieties of pellet hops, and 8 kinds of whole leaf hops. And Hop Tech not only carries Y yeast and White Labs yeast for you, but also Fermentus, 04, 5, 6, 23, 33, and T58 Belgian yeast, plus Cooper's Nottingham and Windsor yeasts. Got your recipe ready to go? Pick up some great brew gear like new long and short sleeve shirts, games, and more. Hop Tech's new website is being updated every day with new items. If you don't see it, call the shop. They're open six days a week. BN Army and AHA members get a 10% discount, and active military personnel get 15% off. Visit HopTech.com today for great selection, great service, and a great discount. HopTech.com. Nico, listen, our lawyer said that we had to do this for one hour, and after this, we don't have to talk to each other for three more months until the next okay, meeting. Kids. Come on, let's get out of here. I'm supposed to have more lines, so I'm the professional. <clears throat> hey, it's Sully. And I'm Nico. And we opened the 21st Amendment nine years ago at 563 2nd Street in San Francisco, just two blocks from Giants Park, to make great beer and have a great time doing it. That's right, because to us, the 21st Amendment is more than just the right to make beer. It's the right to experiment, to be innovative, and just do things differently. And so now, we're putting our craft beer in cans. That's right, cans. You can find our world-famous Hell or High Watermelon Wheat Beer and Brew Free or Die IPA throughout California and Alaska. And now, it's also available on draft at select accounts in the Bay Area. So next time you're at your local neighborhood pub or good beer store, be sure to ask for 21st Amendment in cans. Because everyone likes it in the can. Tasty Crack Cans. Tasty Crack Cans. Williams Brewing is your online resource for prompt delivery of quality home brewing supplies. Since 1979, Williams Brewing has offered the finest equipment and freshest ingredients and the best customer service in the business. Cut hours off your brewing sessions by using one of our 11 varieties of famous Williams malt extract. Our Williams Belgian Pale Extract is mashed with pure Belgian two-row malt and a small percentage of Belgian wheat malt for an authentic Belgian character you just can't get from other extracts. Or check out our unique fermenters, two-and-a-half-gallon kegs, paintball tank-based draft beer equipment, bottling aids, and much more. We even have our own line of precision hydrometers. Go to williamsbrewing.com to browse our vast selection. That's williamsbrewing.com. Orders placed by 3.30 p.m. Pacific time ship the same day. Brewing is easy. The Williams way. Hi, this is John from Grain and Grape in Melbourne, Australia. This has been a big year for us. We've just celebrated our 21st birthday and we've been voted best home brew shop in Australia. We reckon that makes us pretty much the best brew shop in the Southern Hemisphere. Now we've got the ultimate fix for all you space poor, time poor, and lapsed brewers. The all in one Braumeister is now at Grain and Grape, and it's a beauty. There are 20, 50, and 200 litre systems. It lets you complete a temperature controlled mash, boil, and cool, all within the same stainless steel mains powered unit. So if you live in an apartment, you don't have the time to complete a traditional brew day, or just plain lazy, you can be brewing beautiful all grain beer more quickly than ever. We're also now making our own range of small batch fresh work kits on the 200 litre system right here in the warehouse. Just one last thing. Mention the Brewing Network next time you're ordering online or over the phone to receive freight free on your next order of up to 15 kilos. Check out grainandgrape.com.au for conditions. Back to your hosts, Jamil Zanashef and John Palmer. Putting the testicles in technical. This is Brew Strong. Woo-hoo! I've been feeling very technical these days. <laughs> Have you been feeling testicle? <laughs> um, no, not testy, uh, but pretty, pretty relaxed. Really. Well, you should once a year because you know cancer right. prevention. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and speaking of feeling testicles, <laughs> best segue. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> ever. I tell you what I say. <laughs> King of segues. 
<laughs> Fel- <laughs> fellows and gals, are you looking to spice things up in the bedroom? Been fantasizing about surprising your lover with an adventurous new toy or adult movie? Here's an offer you won't be able to resist. Go to adamandeve.com, and for a limited time only, you'll get 50% off just about any item. And when you select your one item at 50% off, you'll also receive three free adult DVDs for a little inspiration. And you can also uh, use the free extra gift, so essential we can't mention on the radio. To top it all off, they'll throw in free shipping on your entire order. So check out adamandeve.com today for this special offer. You will get 50% off just about any one item when you type J-A-M-I-L, Jamel, for the offer code upon checkout. When you do, you'll get three free DVDs, you get a free extra gift, and free shipping. So a very cool offer. You buy one item, half price. And the pricing seems pretty reasonable to me. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. I haven't shopped a lot, but it seems pretty pretty reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> well, compared to Amazon, yeah. Right. C- compared to getting my, my adult gifts from Amazon. You viewed um, plastic jelly. You might also like <laughs> Bruce Strong. <laughs> adult diapers. <laughs> um, uh, and so you, you, you get the half-price item. They throw in... The th- three DVDs, the extra gift, with you know, the strap, and the, the, the strap, uh, and free shipping. So it's a great deal. You'd use the off code Jamel, J A M I L, at adamandeve.com, or you can go to their mobile site, m.adameve.com, and do it all there. So very cool. Check them out. Good sponsor, and uh, help pay for the show. So uh, if you have the need, check it out. Good yeah. Christmas gifts. Yeah. I, I I was wondering, though, I mean, we encourage, you know, our listeners to send John Blickman an email. Should our listeners also send Adam and Eve an, an email yeah. expressing support? Absolutely. Yeah, tell them, yeah. Tell them you heard on Adam and Eve, uh, on the <laughs> Bruce Strong show. <laughs> I heard about you guys that, uh, from your website. Um, better yet, send them an order. Or, yeah, yeah. Purchase, it- purchase some stuff. And even if you don't need it, you can send it to me. I'm sure I can make use of it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, you think know, it uh, re- decorate the brewery, whatever? You think they've redefined the term stocking stuffer? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just ask that? Is that too inappropriate? That I'll edit this out later. That Don't was worry. a good one. That Don't was worry a good about one. It. Yeah. Um, that was like PG thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the eighties. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. <clears throat> so uh, we were talking about before the break was um, uh, events. And here's an interesting thing. Now, I bet you you guys have already got, like, a million requests for events. When we opened up, I could not open email every day without seeing a request for some sort of events. Must have gotten 50, 60 event requests right off the bat. It's like, we have this beer beer festival and give us beer. And, you know, in some places they're willing to buy the beer. Some people... They'll, you know, provide pours, various things like this. And uh, the question that I think you guys had was, is it worthwhile? Are you, you know, and you know, I wrote a blog <laughs> entry on basically saying, no, it's not worth the time. The only reason that we do events at this point is in... I'm sure that they become more valuable as you go forward in your si- and you grow in size. I think a lot of brewery events, they think of it as, well, you're new and starting out. This is good exposure for you. But I think what they don't take into account is that your amount of your beer is limited. You're probably already selling everything you can make. Your amount of time is limited, and that's the thing you can't make more of. And, um, you know, those two things... It, it doesn't really do you a whole lot of good. Because doesn't it generate buzz? Well, that's what they'll say. It's like, well, generate buzz. The buzz that's being generated is a bunch of drunk people <laughs> at a lot of these events. Are, a lot of these events, I mean, you it's will true. come across, you know, there might be 5% of the people or maybe 10% of the people are actually interested in craft beer. They want to see new breweries. They want to learn about new products in the market. They really appreciate They want to talk to the brewers, things like that. The vast majority of the people there are just to get drunk. And, you know, maybe they'll enjoy some beers, but I, uh, you know, the majority of people I see at these things, oh, you guys have been to beer events. You really think that more than and, you know, a small percentage are really experiencing an interest and can remember what happened the right. next day? And I think also it's hard for people that are interested to, to interact with the brewers that are there. 
because you've got mm-hmm. this, you know, wave of right. humans behind there's, you there's trying no to time push. To, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. And they're not, and most of the breweries that we, you know, that do do the pourings that I've seen and the events that Brian and I have been to short together is, you know, it's, it's not their, it's not their unique beers. It's their pale ale. It's their, you know, it's the, right, round, right. you know, it's the very, it's the, whatever is going to. It's the mass crowd. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So uh, right. that's, uh, that's really. Especially if you want to do something uh, exotic. Yeah, and that's why I've been struggling with this idea of like, you know, well, should we, you know, because sh- there's a bunch of different, you know, beer fests, you know, in SF mm-hmm. or in the Bay Area that we, you know, that we've been to, and I was like, well, you know, is it important or not? And right. It doesn't seem that it's going to yeah. be real. Uh, I mean, yeah. you know, I My, don't want people to think I'm down on these beer events, but I well, think a lot that, of them I think need to kick in the ass. Well, you know, size wise, I think it's not necessarily appropriate for the smallest brewery, <laughs> right? And especially, you know, you're selling all your beer already and asking you to give up several kegs of beer that it's huge is, is like it's a make huge. or break in your rent. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, I'm sorry. Um, you know, someone will buy it. But then again, it's like, well, we want you to be there to pour. It's like, okay, so take me out of the brewery for an entire day or take me out of the office for an entire day. It's like, wow, that's, you know, there's... I'm personally I'm working 7 days a week, 16, 18 hours a day. I'm working nonstop. I'm doing the Brian Hunt thing, but I'm doing it all on <laughs> other stuff, you know. Yeah. It's 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 a huge amount of work and to take me out of pocket for a day is just it's a it's a huge load and uh well, I think it's and we all know timing. how a huge load is. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, my, my first taste of Jolly Pumpkin was at a beer event. You uh-huh. know, one of these things, and you were there. It was it was in Florida form. at the uh, NHC. conference. Yeah. yeah, yes. And I mean, yeah, maybe and maybe that's maybe that in itself is um, a condition that you look at when you think about a beer event. You know, who else is going to be mm-hmm, there? Mm-hmm. Who's the crowd? Um, because I mean, at well, that particular one, there was Bell, there was Jolly Pumpkin. Yeah, I'd was... say the Homebrewers Conference is a whole different animal. Like that, yeah, I mean, I, that's not when I was thinking events like, that, like G, uh, Great American and, and that one were mm-hmm. definitely not. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't going to include those. Two. Those are different. Yeah. Well, and, and and for me, um, you know, I'm I'm not against spear events and. <laughs> And we've done several events, and the events that I am interested in doing are ones where it's a nonprofit for a charity, and the funds are going to something that we're interested in, you know, furthering or supporting, or, you know, a friend has asked for support of their event. If it's a friend, like, John, if you ask me, say, I'm doing mm-hmm. this beer event, it's, you know, commercial, I'm going to pocket every cent i'm gonna make a fortune i want you to give me beer i'd be like okay john here's your beer you know (laughs) Uh, not a problem Mm -hmm. somebody i've never met before asked me to donate a thousand dollars worth of beer so they can make a profit it's like i'm sorry i can't do that yeah somebody asking me you know to sell them beer and you know be there it's like uh you know in the future, we will, but right now, I, I, I can't afford to, to spend that amount of time. I'm sorry. I mean, I really want to support those events, but that's really hard. Somebody where, you know, they'll provide the pourer and they'll buy the beer and you don't have to do anything. It's like, well, that's nice, but again, I, I don't think it's really the best way to utilize our product because, you know, the people that are going to try it, there's nobody there to talk to them about it. It's okay. Like, yeah. It's just a big party, and they're they're not really enjoying right. it. They're and just getting drunk. And there's nothing wrong with that, yeah. you know. But on the other hand, it's like, you know, we have to do what is the best, you know, the best. What the heck are you snorting <laughs> over there? You sneezing your ass off? Come on, we're trying to do a show over here. Did you notice? Well, look, talk to Justin. As soon as he gets rid of the dogs, <laughs> sneezing will go away. All right, <laughs> only only one more to die. Oh, really? Oh. Um, I wasn't going to say. It. <laughs> no, and our poor dog is sick right now. I'm just dying. see what happens for Clemped now. See? He he barked at me the other day. Well, you, oh uh, yeah, yeah. She you look more she, like a right. you look more like a male. She's, she's yeah. trying to do everything she can to protect the pack. She's, yeah, but she's sick right. She was now. on it. I mean, I rang that doorbell. <laughs> yeah, she's a poor little thing. Yeah. She's not feeling so good. But so um, I mean, but you're saying that you got to pick the event. Make sure that it's a an event that serves right. you. Well, and that, you know, and, and it's not that the events are bad. It's like, you know, in some, someday in the future, maybe they'll be like, well, hey, you rejected us in the past. Sorry, tough luck. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll come back to screw me. But 
um, you know, right now it's very difficult for us to participate in, in more than just a couple of events. You know, so Makes sense. Yeah. you know, hopefully people will understand. It's like it's tough for a small brewery to do that, and it's, I don't think it's the most advantageous. You know, they feel that it's you know good marketing. It's like, well, I think a small brewery needs doesn't need a lot of marketing. I don't think they need marketing that costs money for sure. I mean, you know, Facebook, mm-hmm. Twitter. We talked about that earlier. Uh, you know, going out to events. You know, you know those things where you have when you go to City Beer. And um, um, La Trap, La Trap and uh, well, Shot Wells. and all right. When you're there, go and talk to all the people and spend time talking to all the customers there. And if they don't know who you are or why you're there, you just explain. Just say, hey, you know, they they you know, City Beer is real interested in you know new breweries, and that's why they have me here. You know, it's not I'm here to sell my beer. It's like well, City Beer. You know, ask me. So, you know, promote City Beer and, and what they've done for you and what they're doing for their customer. And City Beer will appreciate that. And the customers will appreciate that. And they'll they'll like that. And, you know, they'll get to know you. And it's a, it's a less, you know, I'm here to market the beer. No, it's I'm the the brewer owner. And, you know, I like to, you know, be here and, and, and drink the beer with, with folks. That sort of thing, priceless. If you can get, you know, 20 people at an event – to like you and feel a relationship to you, I think that that is better than a you know a five thousand person event where you're just slamming beer out of a jockey box and talking to nobody. Oh, well, I think that's what we meant when we do events. We don't do five thousand no, people I, events. I, was, I mean, I was I, that's a, that's I was thinking of like the events like you know, Bruce on the Bay or you know like whatever. Oh yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, those are like good that. size events. Yeah, I mean, those are good big size events. I mean, and so... So the smaller, the better, basically. Yeah, and I, when I thought, I mean, I didn't... Like, the more I didn't you include, can talk to individuals. The right, better. and I wasn't including, like, you know, like, pint nights or meet the brewer nights. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that. That, that, mm-hmm. that, to me, is a, that's that's more market, like, more direct those, marketing. I think those are quite valuable. Right, and, uh, but that's not... A, to for me, the I mean, retailer, for you, for right. the business. Yeah. Right, and it's so much more... It's, it's a, it, again, I think when you can when you can make a personal connection to, to anybody, you know, your best... There's a great book called Grilla Marketing, and they really just talk about like the idea of of getting people on board uh, mm-hmm. on your brand, and and they'll go and sell it for you. You don't have to right. do anything. Right. So if you get them to to buy into it, and you can't do you can't do that at a five thousand person event. They're, they don't. They don't. I mean, you're not going to get that yeah. kind of a, a connection. And that was that's the reason I am asking because I I've never had an experience where I'm on mm-hmm. the other side of, of mm-hmm. that on mm-hmm. the other side of the jockey box. Right. And to see what you know after let's say you did Bruise on the Bay. You know what? Two weeks down the road, did you see kind of a spike in you mm-hmm. know in sales? Did you see that you guys were moving through beer faster? And, and now you, I will say that <laughs> <you know, laughs> there's there's been a couple of events. There's one from uh, actually from some dear friends of mine that were doing the event, and I initially said, "Well, you know, we can't really do the event." And then um, man, and Leanne, they're just like, "Oh, come on, you know, do the event." I'm like, well. You know, you'll have to pick up the beer. You'll have to, you know, provide the volunteers. You'll have to do everything. And they're like, okay, we'll do it. We'll do it for you. And um, I'm like, all right, all right. <laughs> and then we were able to get a change around so my wife could go and, and pour the beer at the thing. But I still couldn't be there. And I hate not being there because I, I worry about the message, right? But she did a good job. And off of that, we got a couple of new accounts, you know, people that had, were there at that event for, you know, and they, they taste it. They're like, oh, yeah, we got to have your beer. It's like, okay. So I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but, um, you know, there's a there's a cost associated, and who knows, you know, what kind of value you get out of it. Right. So, like, you're, are you pretty much are saying that our efforts are better spent elsewhere. When you're small, I think so. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like uh, opening up new markets. You got to have a salesperson on the ground there, so you got to have enough volume to pay for somebody to be there. Same thing on these events. I think it's great once you get. An, if I had the budget to hire somebody to go and just do events, I think I would. And that it's like, oh, you know, spend your every weekend at these beer events. And talk to people about, you know, talk to as many people as you can about our beer and make them passionate about our beer. That would be worth hiring somebody. But I can't afford a person like that. I can, you know, afford the basic crew we have now to get the beer out and for me to do all that stuff. And I just don't have the time. 
Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll get to that point. And I think, you know, I don't think a lot of these other breweries that know what they're doing would be there if it wasn't valuable. It's just you have to get to a certain size. And for the smaller producer to be there, I think it kills you. You know, when, you, when you're looking at every dime, uh, that's tough. All right, let's do this. Let's take a short break. And when we come back, we'll uh, wrap up with your questions from the chat after this. When Blickman Engineering set out to design a great brewing stand, they knew it had to be strong, adaptable, and last for a lifetime. The top-tier brewing stand is now proudly available at BlickmanEngineering.com. It grows with your brewing skills and equipment. Start with 5-gallon coolers on its heavy-gauge stainless steel shelves. Then move all the way up to 30-gallon pots on the high-output burner tiers. Speaking of burners, the custom Blickman Engineering top-tier burners are extremely powerful, efficient, and amazingly quiet. They have safety stops to center your pot and they'll last a lifetime and won't rust. The top-tier brewing stand allows virtually infinite combinations from traditional gravity systems to two tiers to completely horizontal. Configure your stand the way you want and have the freedom to change it at any time in the future. Your brewing stand should adapt with you, not force you to learn a new process. Visit BlickmanEngineering.com today to configure your top-tier brewing stand and to find a local Blickman retailer. You'll be surprised with all the flexible features and the competitive price. Start brewing with Blickman from the top tier. In a world where everything has been lost. What happened to the city? It's in ruins. Only one man has the ancient knowledge to restore civilization. Uh, I need a drink. Oh no, the liquor store has been ransacked. You looking for beer, stranger? (laughs) Boy, all the liquor got drunk up in the first 25 minutes of the apocalypse. Wait, there's still some bottles over... Oh, no. Those are non-alcoholic beer. (laughs) I reckon you better stick to arrowroot tea and a desperate nomadic existence like the rest of us. People, I'm a home brewer. I know how to make alcohol. (gasps) Oh, 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 it can't be done. Come with me if you want the beer. Okay, I'm going to need some big plastic buckets. He is the chosen one. The prophecies say that he's going to get us wasted. Someone start heating water. And then From the creators of Northern Brewer, the people who brought you $7.99 Brew Saver Shipping, massive selection, and superior customer service comes... Hi, I'm Jamel Zanishev, and in addition to my work on the Brewing Network, I write the style profile column in every issue of Brew Your Own magazine. Hi, I'm Sean Paxton, and when I'm not prepping for the home-brewed chef on the Brewing Network, you can find me writing articles on how to cook with your homebrew for Brew Your Own magazine. Greetings, cretins. This is John Palmer, and when I'm not writing for Brew Your Own, I'm reading it. John Palmer, Sean Paxton, Jamil Zanishev. If you love listening to them on the Brewing Network, you'll love reading their articles, tips, and recipes in the pages of Brew Your Own magazine. Join Jamil, John, and Sean eight times a year in Brew Your Own. And when you subscribe to BYO on the Brewing Network website, half of your subscription price goes right back to the BN to support great beer and food programming. So sign up for Brew Your Own magazine through the BN website today so you can listen and read. Read your way to better homebrew. Hey, what are you doing, man? Writing a review of WLP 400. What? You're reviewing yeast? Yeah. White Labs has homebrewer reviews of all their strains. Are you new to these interwebs? Check it out. That's awesome. White Labs, your source for great yeast, invites all brewers to visit whitelabs.com to read and write your own reviews of all their yeast strains. Get real-world tips and tricks from other brewers who have made the most of their vials and post your own experiences. It's another way White Labs brings you closer to the best yeast on the planet. And send. There you go. You misspelled flocculate, dude. What? Ah. Uh. Of White Labs. It's all in the vial. 
to the beer guys that make other beer guys look like wine guys. Brew strong. Here we are talking about Chardonnay. <laughs> it's mm, delicious. <laughs> I like the oak. I, I like, like the oak. I like buttery. I like it really buttery and soft. Buttery. It's soft and buttery. <laughs> mm. I like it when it's soft and buttery. <laughs> when you drink it, think of think of salmon sautéed in a um, Channeling Homer show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of which, you, 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 did you know? You know, I got my friend John Palmer here. Mm. Where? I didn't know that. You didn't know that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sometimes I wonder. Yeah, you dirty bastard, you. Uh, my friend John Palmer, what you don't know about my friend John Palmer, he actually wrote the theme song to Barney. Mm. Big purple bastard no. himself right there. No. That's his name. He did. <laughs> you can blame it all on him? He did. He did. <laughs> you ask him. Yeah, he, can, he can show you the original notes and everything. That's that's your proof. You ask him. <laughs> ask him. <laughs> Fucking ask him. He's right here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. All right. So I mean, we got to know how to That's brew, amazing. Speaking of, speaking of. My uh, wife caught me Chris. talking in my sleep and she wrote it down and there it was. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? What, what girl are you talking about? Yeah, all right. Ponies. It's all about ponies. It's all about ponies. <laughs> well, we're all we're we're here with uh, Patrick Horn and Byron Hermanson from uh, Pacific Brewing Laboratory. There, we're talking about um, marketing uh, a brewery, and we're talking about uh, you know kind of the lineup and beer lineup. Um, I I don't think we ever really answered that question about beer lineup. I think you did, you decide we we started out at Heretic thinking oh we're going to do all these different unusual beers and we laid in all sixth barrel kegs and and uh, and then you know a lot of accounts are just like you know we, what we really need is another IPA <laughs> and another and we're like okay we'll do something a little more mainstream. We're still doing really weird mainstream beers, but. You know they sell in larger quantity, and then you know they're now we package in bombers because you know it's like oh yeah yeah you know we can sell that. So can you just tell them it's mainstream, but it's actually pretty you know different. Uh, this I, is the I, new I, thing. You guys got to get on the right. new. You'll shit. love it. So, I promise. So yeah. you guys are in San Francisco, and you know you're walking down the street, and you see that guy who hasn't bathed in a month <laughs> and hasn't shaved in a year. <laughs> and, uh, that's your distributor. <laughs> that's my business he, partner. He's really, he's really, uh, you know, he's completely convinced that his way of doing things is his way of doing things, and you know, the mains fuck the mainstream. Right. That's essentially that's if him. you're going to go with the extreme beers and only extreme beers. I think. Um, <laughs> you know, he's the one drinking saying, it. What you're saying is, don't be the homeless guy walking down the street. <laughs> okay. Right? I Got mean, it. You okay. Know, they, you don't want <laughs> sure. you don't want to quell sure. your your creativity. Otherwise, we would all be making you know mass market loggers. Right. You know, so you want to you you want to do that, and we, we're you know we're having fun with that and barrels and stuff like this, and you know it, it, people are like, well, why are you doing that? That doesn't seem like that makes any sense. It's a lot of work and a lot of expense, and you're never going to recover it. It's like, well, because we're having fun with it. But mm-hmm. we're also going ahead and we'll, we'll brew the beers that you know are are a little bit more mainstream and more people can drink. You know, they're good beers. We like them. All right, you know I don't have a problem with that. Um, but I was thinking people wanted all these different beers. It's a small segment of the population that wants the real different beers. You know, the majority are happy. They, they think different beer is IPA. They <laughs> think different beer. You know, black IPA. That's a good. That's a there good. You go. That's that's a, that's mainstreamish. Yeah, they could mm-hmm. be good there. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're you know, brewing a mainstream, on, you know, a how do you stand out if you're, right. if, you're, if you're brewing a mainstream marketing quality and marketing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Marketing to get them to try it, quality to get them to come back. Well, that's more often squid, in a business I mean, I like, plan, actually, squid ink, great name. So I mean, we're actually going also back to the description kind of marketing part of it. And John had said this earlier, and it's it's been rolling around in my head. Is is he said chocolate IPA, and I was like, ooh. That sounds. Like, that's a new. That sounds awesome. A new kind like, of I love beer. that idea. It's like, yeah. I'm just sounds, scri- sounds horrible. <laughs> chocolate, chocolate IPA. Chocolate, hops, chocolate IPA. Um, well, and and I think the other thing you differentiate yourself on is you know that connection to the customer, that connection to the retailer. Going out there, you got both. You got two of you, which is great. 
and you know both of you are willing to go and interface with the customer and the retailer and and be that you know face of the brewery that's huge that's valuable those breweries that are located somewhere else and just mass producing beer and jamming it into the marketplace with good marketing they don't have people on the ground they don't have actual that's why you know they love having you know having you there because you're real you're you're not some corporation mass producing something with clever marketing you're a couple of guys brewing from passion you might have decent marketing as well but you're there you're you're real and it's actually coming from you know your heart and that makes the beer taste better hmm. mm-hmm. that's a hell of a sound bite <laughs> there you go what can i say i'm a professional <laughs> <laughs> I do this for a living. <coughs> All right. So, uh, what do we have in the chat? Anything? People asleep? Uh, People drinking? Mostly and mostly. Um, actually, there's a question about label design going around. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so many different labels and so many different custom names, and you know everyone right. has a cute name for everything. Um, again, how do you focus on your label? Like, for example, the Heretic beers are all basically the same label with just the different <laughs> word underneath it, right? <laughs> So how do you? Yeah. But so well, I mean, h- how do you go? How do you prevent the customer from, uh, you know, s- blanking and, out? Well, and both of the, your beers have the for, the similar first word, third which is evil. <laughs> so how do you? How do you? You know, when you have the same label with the same everything, except the second word is different. I, w- I would do, do that. You allow the customer to differentiate between the two I if would, they're right on the shelf. I would not recommend that. However, <laughs> that's the cards. Good answer. Dealt, you know, it's just. Um, <sighs> Yeah, you know, I think um, I think there's a, a a couple of things to take into account. One is when you merchandise one beer and you've got your one label face on the shelf in a sea of others, it may or may not pop. You know, somebody can breeze across it and not really see it. If you put two or three that have a very similar look. Side by side, you've blocked out a pretty good chunk of shelf space, and I think the consumer is much more likely to stop on that and see that. Hmm. And so that's one of the reasons why it's like, well, if they're all similar, I think that'll help. Um, and I think our label tends to stand out a little bit from existing labels, so I think that helps. And again, I think if we can get two bottles side by side or three side by side, I think we'll people will see it. And then they can take the time to differentiate between the brands. What we really need to do is put some other indicator on the bottle that, you know, a color stripe or something that indicates the different brands. So, you know, it's just one of those things. Any other questions? That's it. That's it. We're done. It was a great show. I really enjoyed it. Squid love for your hibiscus. Oh, squid love. We need to hire you, John yeah. Palmer. <laughs> I think you know, I think I think that's close. Us. I think you you need to add one more word: squid love juice. Oh yes, <laughs> there you go. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And segue to Adam and Eve. Juicy again. squid, juicy squid, oh. juicy squid, 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 juicy squid, squid juice. Oh. <laughs> I mean, squid ink, Slippery squid tentacle. juice. Squid I'm telling yeah. you, yeah. squid juice wouldn't be that bad. That wouldn't be so bad. Uh, bartender, right. can I please have a squid juice? Squid juice. Yeah, squeeze me a squid <laughs> juice. Yeah. <laughs> if you get a chance, check yeah. out our great sponsor, BlickmanEngineering.com. Uh, they they brew uh, they make innovative products uh, to make <laughs> your brewing day much more fun and accessible. And innovative. They do. And innovative. Innovate your brew and day. Creative. Innovate your brew day. <gasps> oh, you should be in marketing. You I should, am. You, you, uh, should, you uh, should write that one down before get you get drunk it, and pass out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And before the rest of us get drunk and pass out, what we're going to do is uh, Palmer and I are going to uh, do a live Q&A session, if you're listening live. Uh, stay on the air. Get in the chat room by clicking yeah. that chat now button, and you can uh, you can join us and ask questions, and we'll answer them for you. Do you, you. have the questions? Uh, they're probably printed out and up and wherever they were before. All right. So. Until then, we're strong. Brew strong, everybody. <laughs>